Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos on identifying unknown compounds. During these videos we should gain a working knowledge of how to begin identifying an unknown compound using both chemical testing and spectroscopy. The first step to the identification process is purification. As the main application for identification of unknown compounds is their safe disposal, as the starting compounds are often mixtures of different compounds. These different compounds must be disposed of in different manners, as mixing them can be very dangerous. If, for example, a solution containing aluminium chloride is added to water, a violent reaction that liberates gaseous HCl occurs. This would be both dangerous to personnel and potentially destroy equipment, leading to higher operating costs. The following basic methods are those that are most useful, although they are by no means the only methods and they do not test for everything. Although it will be covered in more detail in a later lecture, column chromatography is a useful method to start with, so I'll mention it briefly here. It allows compounds to be separated by their polarity. This is useful to separate fractions from solid compounds. As the sample, if, if the sample is a liquid, HPLC, or high performance liquid chromatography, can be used. If the compound is a mixture of solids and liquids, the compound should be filtered using the Buckner funnel before proceeding. Solids can be separated by recrystallization. The sample should be dissolved in a solute that dissolves the mixture with heating and allows any impurities in, uh, in the compound to stay in solution at room temperature. The solution should then be allowed to cool as slowly as possible. Large crystals of the pure compound should then form. If there is any insoluble impurity, then it can be removed before cooling by hot filtration. Liquids are purified by a similar process called freeze concentration, by which the mixture is slowly cooled. When it reaches freezing point of one of the substituents, that one will crystallise and can be easily removed by filtration. The temperature can then be decreased until all the fluid has been crystallised. Following these processes, the sample should be pure. They can be tested to discover their chemical structure and properties. The next lecture in this series will cover some of the basic methods to test for some simple chemical properties, which can help to narrow the scope for further testing.